Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Enlarge my measure of mercy is the title of this devotion. You see, we all have been given in our communion with Jesus when we receive the new birth of his life coming into us, the consciousness and the knowledge of his mercy, his loving kindness by which we're born again. As Paul would say in Titus chapter 3 verse 4, when the kindness and the love of God our Savior appeared unto man, he saved us, but not by any work of righteousness we have done, but by his mercy. So you see your own salvation <coughs> is a work of excuse me, of the Father's mercy because Jesus is seated on the mercy seat. That's why he invites us to come to his throne of grace to find mercy. And you see, there is such incredible mercy, incredible mercy. I, I just, just, that scripture I just quoted to you, he says here, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Chapter 4, verse 16 of Hebrews. It's immense revelation, mercy. It's such a broad manifestation of the very essence and nature of God himself. You know, as John the Beloved would write in 1 John 4, verse 16, God is love. That word love there also comes from the word mercy. Moses, when he asked to see God's glory, God revealed his mercy, we read in Exodus 34. Mercy is what Israel was called to continuously worship. Oh, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Psalm 136 and David says in Psalm 23, verse 6, your goodness and mercy shall follow me. Oh, I love the just the whole heart and mindset of the Heavenly Father is the benevolence, the goodness of his mercy. And I plead with you today that you trust God. Enlarge this measure of mercy you've given me because many times, friends, we find we're falling short of revealing that mercy in the conflict of the challenges in this life. And the Lord Jesus really gives you and me a poignant charge when he says here in Matthew 5, verse 7, Blessed, happy to be envied, and spiritually prosperous with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of the outward conditions, are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. For they shall obtain mercy. See, when you allow God to enlarge your measure, a greater manifestation of His mercy can come, a greater manifestation. And, and Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, be merciful even as your heavenly Father is merciful. That scripture calls me in my prayer time, Father, Father, you're wanting me to extend your mercy you want me to be merciful as you are merciful. Father, I don't want to just be merciful as I am merciful. I want to be merciful as you are merciful. I may say, hey, I'll put up with this, but I won't put up with that. But you, what you are willing to bear, what you are willing to be gracious about, forgiving about, good about, is what I want, Lord. I don't want to live by my standard. I want to live by your standard. God said to Israel, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways not my ways. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are my ways above yours and my, and my thoughts above yours. And you see, God wants to draw us into having his way of mercy, his thoughts. Jesus, for example, here in Mark chapter 11, verse 25 says, Whenever you stand praying, whenever you're living in communion with the Father in prayer, and you realize you have 
anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not, if you say, no, I'm not letting this go, I'm not letting this go, neither will your heavenly Father forgive you. You see, if we do not open up ourselves to enlarge our measure, we limit ourselves in our experience of His mercy. He's merciful to the merciful. And you see, I, I have often wept before the Lord and wept before the Lord because it was pushing on. I couldn't bear it and I kept feeling the upsets, the hurt, the irritation about it. And I said, Lord, my measure is too small. My measure is too small. I want your love, your mercy, your forgiveness. Father, enlarge my measure, enlarge my measure. And then when I read something like this, go with me to Luke chapter 6, please, starting at verse uh, uh, 27. Jesus said, Now I say to you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Folks, these words right there have helped me, helped me. And Virginia has held, held us and helped us through the years of pastoring when we suffered some, some painful experiences. And to not allow some grudge to develop or to allow some offense that would cause us as a church to have ways about us that don't represent Jesus. Oh my goodness, I am so grateful for these words of the Lord Jesus. And there's been people, they would be so upset and I've prayed for them and prayed for them and prayed for them. You know, one fella, he, he got so upset. I understand why he got upset. It's a story in itself. I understand. I, I'm not saying it was right he was upset, but I really understand it. I feel compassion for his upset. And I prayed for him. And he was throwing stones through the window of our house. And always when I'm on a trip, frightening Virginia and the children, and it was just a devil provoking him, provoking him to try to offend me with him so he could cut him off from me. So I'd stop praying for him. So I stopped believing Jesus for him. And I'm so grateful. This scripture right there that says, bless those who curse you and pray for those who spitefully use you. I just kept praying for him and praying for him. How did you know, Pastor, the stones came from him? Because he'd write on it and I know his handwriting. So I prayed for him and prayed for him and comforted Virginia and the children. And one time I walked into the store and there he was and my heart just burst with all that prayer of love and I hugged him and he looked at his friend and he said, this is my pastor. Oh, friends, I'm so grateful that if we allow Jesus to use the things we go through to enlarge our measure, we will know mercy that is humanly not known. It doesn't come from human nature. It comes from the divine throne of His grace. This incredible mercy by which He saved us, as I read to you from, a, as I quoted to you from Titus chapter three. Oh, what mercy! What mercy saved me! Mercy saved me! Mercy found me. Though my sins were great, His mercy was greater. And here, let what you're going through to enlarge, let whatever you're going through that's painful heart enlarge your measure. Don't waste these painful things you go through on bitterness and anger and resentment, but let it use, let it be used by God to enlarge your measures. You bring it to God and say, Father, I pray forgiveness, I pray release, I pray grace, and then mercy begins to flow from the throne of grace. Ooh, glory, glory for this kind of mercy. And he says, now to him who strikes you on the one cheek, right? Offer the other also. And from him who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. And I know there are people that, when they hear me say this, they say, Pastor, are you, Pastor, are you advocating for people to just allow themselves to be abused on a daily basis? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, I do not advocate that by any means. But one thing I do know, if you've suffered some abuse, 
and you begin to give that to God every day by praying for the abuser and saying, mercy, Father, forgive him, forgive her, forgive, forgive, Father. I release it. I release it to your mercy. I pray don't hold it against them and let your healing flow. Let, and I tell you as you begin to do this, your measure, your measure, your measure with all, with every prayer is growing, is growing and more mercy and more mercy is able to come through you, not only to heal you, but to defend you and protect you and give your counsel what to do in those situations and, and how to position yourself how to position yourself. I know sometimes, yeah, it's sad how you then aren't able always to be in the same place until God is able to work changes. So I know this is a complicated issue and you have to deal with every situation on its own merit and by the counsel and wisdom of the Lord. So you cannot just, just give one for everybody. Every situation is unique and God has wisdom for every situation. Therefore, we need the counsel of God and not just the counsel of man. Give to everyone who asks of you and from him who takes away your goods, don't ask them back. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do likewise. If you want people to be honest to you and repay you and, and give back to what they owe you, then you do that for others. Don't hold it against them that they didn't do it. You just, you know, do right to them and right to others. And you know, folks, sometimes we have to just say, Father, I clear that record. If they never repay me, you always take care of me, Father. I'm not going to hold it against them. I'm not going to allow this to make me stumble when you're so good to me. The gold and the silver is yours, Lord. I trust you. I commit it to you. You know, and that you, you uh, I'll guard your heart is really the point. And, it, and allow these situations to enlarge your measure is the point of this, reading this. I believe all these things Jesus is saying is to enlarge your measure quickly in closing. Love those who love. Uh, he, he says, uh, let's go to verse 35 to, to finish here because it's too long otherwise. Love your enemies, do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return and your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High for he is kind to the unthankful and evil Therefore, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Judge nothing, you shall not be judged. <coughs> Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. You see why I call this enlarge my measure of mercy? I want to have a larger measure that you can pour out more mercy, more mercy, and more mercy that I become a flowing river of your love and kindness. Oh, friends, I tell you the truth. It is heaven to live this way. Look at Jesus. Amen? Have a good day.